Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you on your day. We're able to gather together for worship, to hear your word. We pray today your Holy Spirit would help us to understand your word so that we can put it into practice. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been said, once you come into contact with God, then he has a plan for your life. Once you come into contact with God, then he has a plan for your life. I grew up in a small country town called Bandara, up near Inverell. I came into contact with God through the local Anglican Church of St Mary, through a godly old Vicar Reynolds. And I used to help him on Sunday mornings in the church as an acolyte. In the school, there were some children with darker skins. They called themselves Aborigines. What did that mean? Who were they? What was their background? I was interested in them and one of their family, Pearl Duncan through the church army, became a mission to Aborigines in Queensland. During the Second World War, we got underway and we went to Wollongong. My father was a carpenter and he was looking for work and he found a job at Lysarts in Port Kembla. I did my education at um, the Wollongong Primary School then on to Technical College and High School, finishing in 1945. The war was ending. As far as I know, there were no Aboriginal children in those schools. But the rector, the Reverend Long, RCM Long, at St Michael's had been a CMS secretary in Victoria. He was familiar with Aboriginal work in Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory. He mentioned to me that at Coromel there was a retired pioneer missionary named Alf Dyer. Now Alfred worked at Owen Pally, Gunbalanya. He was involved with Aborigines and at Caledon Bay in the Gulf of Carpentaria some Japanese had been killed and a policeman, Constable McCall, had been killed in Woodrow Island on Blue Mud Bay. So my interest in Aborigines was aroused. I knew that the CMS, Church Mission Society, worked with full blood Aboriginal tribes in Arnhem Land. I was told I would need some trade to offer myself among them. So I went up to BHP in Port Kembla became an apprentice fitter and turner for the next four years before I could apply to CMS to be a missionary in Arnhem Land. Having finished my apprenticeship, I applied to CMS and they said I would need to study a year at Moore Theological College in Sydney. What a challenge. 
more college in Sydney? Could I surrender to these new demands? Was God really calling me to leave my work at BHP and go off to Arnhem Land? My father thought I was very foolish to endanger my future prospects. He lured me a college before Arnhem Land. In uh, the book of Judges in the Old Testament, there's some interesting stories. And um, if you have your Bible there, in chapter 6, it says this. It's talking about a man called Gideon. Gideon said to him, If now I've found favour in your sight, show me a sign that it's you who talk with me. This is Gideon talking to an angel. Do not depart from here, I pray, until I come to you and bring you out my offerings and set it before you. He said, I will wait until you come back. So Gideon went in and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread from an ephah of flour. The meat he put in a basket. He put the broth in a pot. He brought them out to him under the terebinth tree and presented them. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand. He touched the meat and the unleavened bread and fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. The Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it is still in Ophrah of the Abizrites. Well, my interest in Aborigines uh, was greatly aroused and um, they were saying, yes, uh, we'll accept you, you have your trade, but you need to go to Moore College for a year. And I thought it was quite a challenge to do that. And uh, just thinking about Gideon in the Old Testament, the challenge that he had. At that time, the Midianites had invaded Israel, invite, invaded Israel, and um, impoverished the country. They were stealing the food and killing the animals. And Gideon was threshing his wheat when the angel of the Lord appeared to him and uh, asked him he was chosen to save Israel. Gideon objected, saying, If the Lord is with us, why all this has happened to us? Where are all these wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us in the hand of Midian. Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I'm the least in my family. The Lord answered, I'll be with you and you will strike down the Midianites together. Gideon replied, If now I've found favour in your eyes, 
give me a sign. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering to set before you. And God accepted his offering and the challenge was now before Gideon with God's covering. And I thought to myself, is God really calling me to do this? To leave BHP, go to more college and then eventually get into a Arnhem land? It's quite a challenge. I think Moses was chosen to lead the Israelites out of Egypt into the promised land. Moses was very concerned. He could not do that unless God was with him. And God assured Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Hudson Taylor, a missionary to China, once commented, where God guides, he also provides. Where he leads, he supplies all needs. I wonder this morning, if God is putting something on your heart and mind, planning something for your life, according to his will, should you take that step of faith, assured of his presence? My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Gideon had that challenge to be the saviour of Israel. God was challenging me to go to Arnhem Land and work with full blood Aborigines. And if God touches our hearts, do we take that step of faith forward? Heavenly Father, we thank you for our lives. We thank you that you do touch our hearts and lives. You do call us for ministries in particular ways according to your will. And we pray this morning that you're touching the hearts of people here, that they might listen to your voice and be obedient. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So one of the ways that we worship is 